News just in, domestic battery installations are now banned. Well, some of them are, sort of, but not really. It's a bit complicated, so let me explain. So I'm here at the unit and I've just been doing a little bit of clearing up and I've been thinking a lot about whether to release this video or not because it's a little bit controversial, but I feel like I need to tell you what my opinion is. There are so many different opinions about these new gu guidelines out there. But to explain the whole picture, we kind of need to go back in time a little bit. So if we go back in time to late 2000s, 2008, 2009, battery storage systems started to become popular. Now this was in the heyday of solar when the feed-in tariffs were being handed out. Lots of government money was being splashed out to encourage people to uptake solar on their homes. So there were companies out there that sprung up out of nowhere because whenever there's government funding, people see pound signs and they get on board. And companies were coming out, lashing in solar installs. Then, when batteries started to become a thing, companies also saw pound signs and decided to include batteries in their packages. And why not? Battery storage technology is an amazing thing and it can help you to make better use of your solar. So around 2009, for example, companies like Kylon Tech started to release these batteries which were fairly reasonably sized modules. And we start to see, at this time, a lot of batteries being installed in lofts. You might have come across it yourself if you're an electrician. Can you see the picture in your mind? An inverter mounted on a wall in the loft with pylon tech batteries on top of a board across the loft joists, for example. Batteries evolved more and more over time. Capacities got bigger. The grant funding went away but recently we've had a resurgence of interest in solar and battery as energy prices have skyrocketed and people want more energy security. So again, in the last few years, we've seen a wave of interest in battery storage being added to existing solar systems or installed as a whole package. Now again, battery technology in itself is amazing, but there are some inherent dangers or risks that we need to think about. Now here at Artisan, as you know and you've seen from our videos, we like to do things properly and we always work with care and attention. Rewind back to three years ago when we did our first battery storage install with Oval Renewables and you'll notice, where did we fit the battery? It was in a garage away from the main house. Why did we install it there? Because I've always had the feeling that installing a battery, you want to be ideally as far away from habitable spaces as possible. We have never installed a battery in a loft and you may have seen on previous videos where I've said that I just don't feel like it's the right thing to do to install batteries in lofts. But there was no specific legislation or guidelines saying that you can't do it. And of course, it's often way easier if you're putting the inverter in the loft to stick the batteries up there too. So thousands and thousands of installations have been done where people have fitted batteries in lofts over the years. However, I have always felt that it just wasn't quite right. And we've even had customers come up to us and say, I've got batteries in my loft. I'm just not comfortable with it. Can you remove them and put them somewhere else? So that's a little bit of a background to what has led to this current situation where we're at today, where on the 31st of March, new guidelines were released by BSI, the British Standards Institution, about the location of batteries within domestic dwellings. And the guidelines included some big changes to what installers have been doing in the past. So to give you a brief summary of the guidelines, what they say is basically, it is not recommended or you should not install batteries in lofts. Great, that's a win for us. We've never done it before and it's always felt bad to me, so that's good. But there are some other more complex changes or guidelines within this document that throw quite a lot of questions up into the air. For example, it is not recommended to install batteries within a house anywhere. So they're saying ideally you should be installing batteries on the outside of a property. If you cannot install them outside, then inside, but with suitable fire protection. So an external garage 
detached from the house, ideal. If a garage is attached to the house, then you need to be thinking about the fire rating of that garage and the potential spread of fire into the house or from the house into the garage. There are other things like not installing batteries within one meter of a door or window, basically because those are potential fire escapes. And there's also changes to do with the maximum capacity allowed in domestic dwellings, 40 kilowatt hours if it's within the house or 80 kilowatt hours if it's elsewhere. Oh, and there's one more thing. In cellars, it is not recommended to install batteries unless the cellar has a fire escape that leads straight outside. So if your cellar has a stairway from inside the house going down into it, they're saying it's not recommended to put batteries in a cellar. Now that throws up a whole series of questions about what we're going to do going forward and what about past installations where we've done some of these things. If you're a customer who's had battery storage installed and maybe it doesn't meet some of those guidelines, what does it mean for you? Or if you're a customer planning to get battery storage and you were hoping to put it in a place that is now not recommended, what does that mean for you? And as an installer, what should we do? Do we have to follow these guidelines or can we just ignore them? If you're an installer who's interested in getting more organized and streamlining your business, then Tradeify might be of interest to you and they're today's video sponsor. They are a job management software for tradespeople. You can get 30% off your first three months of Tradeify using our special code ARTISAN30. And if you just want to try it out, no obligation, no credit card details needed, get a 14 day free trial. Check out the link below. So before we get too carried away, let's talk about what these guidelines are actually for. These are currently designed as a best practice guide. So the best possible practice in an ideal situation is to do X, Y, and Z, and to not do X, Y, and Z. These are not legislation, they're not a legal requirement, they're not even part of British standards at this current time, BS 7671. They're just a recommendation and a guideline. So as much as I totally agree with what these recommendations are saying and the principles behind them, really the principles are to do with protecting firemen as they're firefighting in a building from potential additional risks if batteries are involved, I totally get it and agree with it. But it doesn't mean that if we don't follow these guidelines 100% that we're gonna get into massive trouble at this stage. However, this is the start maybe of something bigger. Because logically, if these are guidelines now, eventually they will be incorporated into future standards, maybe into BS 7671 or other documents that we are required to follow as electricians. We are required to follow those as the minimum standard. That's what BS 7671 is for us. It's the minimum standard that we're supposed to work towards rather than just a best practice guide. So, when that happens, we're gonna to have to take it more seriously, but this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. Flashback to pre-2015. What happened in 2015? The third amendment of the 17th edition of the BS 7671, British standard of electrical installations came out and what did it say? It is not acceptable to install plastic consumer units in domestic dwellings anymore. They should be made of a non-combustible material, i.e. metal. So we went from fitting plastic consumer units to fitting metal ones. Can you remember those changes? How did you feel about them at the time? Let me know in the comments. When that happened, it wasn't like suddenly a plastic consumer unit that you fitted last week was about to catch on fire at any moment. It wasn't unsafe, it's just that a better practice was recommended to raise the overall standard of electrical installations and minimise risk. And that's really similar to what's happening now with these battery guidelines. We didn't have to go back and immediately change all of the plastic consumer units that we'd fitted to metal ones. It was just that from then on, we were fitting metal instead of plastic. And it's similar with this new change, except we're not even there yet. This is not in the regs yet. It is a guideline at this point. And at some point in the future, no doubt it will come into the regs. So we need to be prepared for it. And we need to maybe start changing our mindset a little bit about the way we install batteries. So here is my opinion and feel free to tell me I'm completely wrong in the comments below. 
It's just my opinion. But I feel about these guidelines that if you're an installer, there is no need to panic. Try to stick to these guidelines as much as possible. After all, they've been made for a reason. And going forward, it'll be nice to try to meet these high standards as much as possible. But if there is really no other option, and you've given the customer all the information that they need to make a decision, you've considered the guidelines, but there really is no way to meet them 100%. So your install doesn't 100% comply with these, but you've done your best to get as close as possible, then you might feel that you're okay with that and you go ahead and do the installation anyway, even though it doesn't meet 100% the guidelines. Definitely important though, to make the customer aware and give them the choice as to whether they go ahead based on what they know about the guidelines that you shared with them. And this is partly why I'm making this video because there are a lot of people who are prospective customers who watch our videos and I wanna make them aware of why we might be having these kind of conversations with them as an installer. But what about if you are a customer? If you've got batteries installed in your loft and they've been there for a long time, you might be considering an upgrade anyway. Maybe you need more capacity, maybe you're looking to get a smart battery system so that you can leverage time of use tariffs or smart tariffs like Octopus Intelligent Go or Octopus Intelligent Flux. A lot of these older systems that have been installed in lofts are not smart, you can't really leverage smart tariffs with them, so you might choose to remove that old battery system and install a new smart battery in a more suitable location. And if you do want to do that, we've done that a few times for other customers, we'd love to hear from you. There's a link below where you can get a quote from us. But what if you've just recently had a battery installed and it is a smart battery, but it's been installed in your loft? Well, don't worry. It's not about to catch fire at any moment. Generally, lithium iron phosphate batteries are very safe. It's a very safe battery chemistry. In fact, people have done tests, drilling through them and all sorts of things, and they do not spontaneously combust, even when damaged. The main issue with having batteries in lofts is to do with the weight and then potentially falling through the ceiling if there was a fire. So you don't need to worry, however, I really hope that now going forward, nobody's gonna be quoting to install batteries in lofts anymore. And in most cases, it is possible to install the battery somewhere else, probably on the outside of the property. Well, what if you're considering getting battery storage installed? Now's the time to have the conversation with your installer and make sure they've taken into consideration the guidelines, which are called PAS 63100 or 63100. I'll leave a link below to this document where you can read up if you really want, but it is a 40 plus page document, but installers should be familiar with it. And you can have that conversation about the location of the battery. Hopefully they've taken that into consideration when planning your job. But if they are quoting to put the batteries in the loft, then you can question them and quote this document as evidence. It's certainly a time of change as battery technology gets more and more common more and more popular, more and more useful, and the clever technology behind them can really help to make use of solar and even leverage smart technology, smart tariffs to save money on energy and reduce the carbon impact on the grid. Battery technology is fantastic and it's not going away anytime soon. So my personal opinion on these guidelines is that it's only going to make the implementation of battery storage systems safer and better over time. Of course, it will cause headaches for us as installers from time to time when a customer wants a battery, but there's no other place to be able to install it than a loft. That is going to be a difficult conversation to be had. But hopefully, if we educate ourselves about these guidelines and try to implement them as best we can in our day-to-day -day work, the overall standard of installation will go up, things will be safer for customers and for firemen, and overall, the standard of the industry will be higher. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you think somebody else might benefit from it, why not share it out with somebody else? But either way, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.